the placebo effect. Uh, we've all heard of it, and now we're going to learn a lot more about it. Our next presentation is on the value of the placebo effect, and it comes from Ted Kapchuk, a professor of medicine here at HMS and the director of the program in placebo study at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Ted has served as an expert panelist for placebo controls at the FDA and as a medical writer for the BBC and on multiple advisory panels for the NIH. So without further ado, Ted. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, let me start with the historical vignette. The, uh, the adoption of the randomized, a placebo-controlled randomized clinical trial after World War II marked a momentous shift in medicine. Medical research moved from the laboratory to the bedside and could imitate the precision of the heart sciences. After a series of, of such trials, researchers couldn't help but notice that people in the placebo arm who received the words, symbols, and rituals and care of, health, of medicine without the active ingredient improved. This was a so, the birth of the so-called placebo effect. But this event was not momentous. <coughs> Researchers didn't care whether this phenomena was spontaneous remission, with what Oliver Wendell Holmes called the tincture of time, or was it some still unknown psychosocial biological process? In recent years, the placebo has been taken off the shelf, and I think our team at Harvard Medical School has been one of the leaders of this, of this uh, new investigation and had received much more attention. Uh, I, what are the, I'd like to su suggest three main questions that are being addressed. One, is the placebo effect real? Is it more than the tincture of time? Two, is there a neurobiology? And three, is it worth anything? I'd like to tell you in the, in the short amount of time I have what our, our research at Harvard Medical School suggests. To the first question, is it real? I'd like to give two examples. In a paper published in, in British Medical Journal, our team decided to make placebo as concrete and as real as, as possible, to make it look like a drug. We, wanted, we decided that we would separate the placebo into component parts and incrementally add those component parts in a manner that's analogous, roughly, to dose dependence. Could we administer a small placebo dose, a bigger placebo dose, and a larger, and a really large placebo dose? And, and, and in that end, to that end, we took 262, recruited 262 patients with irritable bowel syndrome and, random, and randomly assigned them to three groups. The first group just had the diagnosis, the attention and questionnaires of making a diagnosis, no treatment, uh, no treatment control, controlling for time. The second group, we did the same diagnosis, and we added fake treatment. In this case, fake acupuncture needles that looked like a needle. The patient saw it go in, stood there like a needle. They felt a scratch. But in fact, it was like a magic sword. The needle went up the shaft of the handle of the needle, and nothing happened, actually, except the scratch. Um, and in order to make sure that we're only adding the paraphernalia of uh, the medical ritual, we dramatically curtailed the practitioner interaction uh, so that he or she became like a technician. Very few words were exchanged. The third group had, uh, had the same diagnosis, the same fake needles, and we added a warm, supportive practitioner interaction that included delving deeply into people's lives, empathy, attentive listen, listening, touch, 20 seconds of thoughtful silence. The, uh, the practitioner had to say, I've listened to you. Let me think about it for a moment. And then would ask the patient, could you explain that better so I understand it better? And a statement of confidence. I think this will be really helpful for you. We filmed the entire trial to make sure our practitioners did exactly what we wanted them to do. And after six weeks, we found we, we had a small plac uh, placebo response, probably from the attention or time. We had a larger placebo response in the second arm, and we had a gigantic placebo uh, uh, response in the third arm, suggesting in this study that placebo is not regression to the mean or spontaneous remission, and it could and be administered in a way that's roughly analogous to a drug. In a more recent uh, study published in the New England Journal, 
it, uh, using a within subject uh, design, we took a group of asthma patients and took them off the medication 480 times. And we brought them to the lab on 480 occasions. And we treated them, and, and, give, and, each, one of, and we give the, in each one of those occasions, they had difficulty, um, discomfort with breathing. We, we took them off the medication, they felt they didn't feel good about their breathing. And we, on each one of those 480 occasions, we administered either no treatment, just watched what two and a half hours of sitting there would do the tincture of time, or we administered different kinds of placebos, like placebo inhalators, placebo fake ac uh, acupuncture needles, and we used an active control uh, uh, to see what, uh, so we compare what real drugs do to these different placebos. And what we found is that the placebos relieved the discomfort of breathing in a way that was no different than the active medication. But the placebos had no effect on the underlying pathophysiology of respiration, suggesting in this study that placebos address self-appraisal and self-reports and not objective pathophysiology. This study underscored what many previous studies had suggested but maybe didn't control as well, is that placebo, that in many different diseases, for example, in cancer, placebos are not going to shrink a tumor, but they will reduce pain, fatigue, and nausea. So the second question, is there a neurobiology here, right? Is this patients who really like their doctors, and you know, doctors giving them some junk, and uh, please forgive me, and, and they just want to say, oh, doc, it's really helping me, right? We don't, is this, is this bogus or real? Or is there some kind of, is this, is there some kind of underlying patho, um, underlying neurobiology, neurochemistry that, that's accompanying these changes that can give a veracity to the experience from a scientific perspective? Neuroimaging study, uh, studies uh, that our team has performed and other teams have performed emphatically demonstrate that placebo treatments activate regionally specific, quantifiable, um, uh, sp and specific regions in the brain, such as the prefrontal cortex, and depending on what kind of um, illness you're treating, for instance, if it's, if it's pain, it'll, 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 uh, placebo treatments will affect the rostral anterior cingulate, the anterior insular, or if it's Parkinson's syndrome, symptom, symptoms, it will affect the striatum. Furthermore, it's become very clear that placebo treatments involve the activation of multiple neurotransmitters, including such, such neuro, uh, neurotransmitters as endorphins, dopamine, serotonin, and cannabinoids. In the field of neuroscience, it's become common to compare the brain to a prediction machine. It looks like, from our, our work right now, that the, um, the implicit suggestions and the um, environmental cues of healthcare prompt changes in neurobiology, which cause shifts in a patient's sensory experiences and self-awareness. That's, um, well, okay, that's good enough on that. And the, uh, so the third question I want to ask, oh, the third question, does it make any difference? This is important. Does this have any value at all? Well, first, uh, um, it's clear that placebo effects are real. It's clear there's a neurobiology. And it's likely that placebos account for a significant portion of the relief patients experience in healthcare environments. I remember what I was thinking about. Is it important? Oh, this is especially important in illnesses where the uh, in many conditions where the placebo, where the drugs that we use are only marginally better than the placebo effect. And there are a lot of illnesses like that. Um, we obviously need new drugs and, and better drugs, but it's clear we, we can't afford to not um, opt harness the placebo effect in that clinical situation. Furthermore, um, um, Placebos are important even in situations where drugs are very powerful. For example, an injection of opioids in front of a patient, full view, in full view, doctor needle goes in. Those opioids are dramatically more effective in pain relief than if the same amount of opioids are given to a patient through an IV without the patient knowing they're, they're getting it. And placebo effects are really important for drug discovery itself. Um, Unless we learn to control and predict 
placebo effects for many conditions demonstrating the superiority of a drug over placebo will remain a challenge. And if I can summarize some of what I was getting at, is, um, I, would, I first want to say I hope it's clear that placebo effects are not the effect of an inert substance. Inert substances don't have effects. That's an oxymoron. Placebo effects, in my opinion, in my team's opinion, is a surrogate marker for the provision of care. It's a, a surrogate marker for what goes on around the drug, around the procedures, and around the surgery that we, we give our patients to great, and so I want to say that. And it's also becomes, it's becoming clear that placebo effects, uh, placebo studies is a way to quantify and experimentally describe what my, one of my mentors, Arthur Kleiman, called the embodied moral practice of medicine, which includes laying on of hands, expressions of, decent, of, of, of kindness, enactments of decency, and commitment to be present. Placebo studies, I think, in what our team is demonstrating at, at Harvard Medical School, has the capacity to turn a romantic notion of the art of medicine into a science of the provision of care, or, if you permit me to use an archaic word, a science of healing. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah, sure. So, having been involved in many a placebo controlled trial, can you talk to us a little bit about how we would take the knowledge that you're generating from your research to and improve, uh, to improve our clinical trial yeah. platforms? Okay. The, um, there, the pharmaceutical industry is beginning, beginning to approach us quite consistently. Um, our team recently discovered what looks like provisionally a genetic signature for people who are more likely to respond, less likely to respond to a particular polymorphism in the comp gene. We have to validate that. There are other, we're, we're very actively involved in looking at uh, brain signatures of what people respond, don't respond to placebos. If we can identify a priori who are likely to be responders and not, we can develop enrichment strategies for drug development. So that, that kind of research is just beginning with my team. Exciting. And then, how do we harness the power of this research and, frankly, the power of, um, of the placebo effect, if you would, or the healing effect into clinical practice? That's a big question. Um, first of all, I think that most of the bottom line of my, team, my team's research is to expose what the, we're swimming in these effects. We, you know, we pay attention to really good drugs, really good procedures, really good surgery, but surrounding that is the effect of the provision of care. Making our community more aware of that will allow people to do the things they do that they think are helping people actually help people. And I don't have time to do a longer answer. We do a lot, we're beginning to do research more and more of what, what actually actions can you take in order to change mm -hmm. Uh, and harness the placebo effect clinically. Obviously, giving sugar pills is not, uh, without a patient knowing deceptively is inappropriate and un, uh, unprofessional behavior. But there, how do, do we engage, talk, look, feel? Um, what kind of questions are patients asking us to ask but we don't mm -hmm. know to ask? Those are some of the questions our team is addressing. Well, thank you so much. Thank lots, you very lots much. Lots for us to do. Thank you.